The pattern on yo-yo loaches always caught my eye. About a year ago, I went ahead and bought six. In this video, I talk through what I've learned in my first year caring for them and how it compares to the common advice found online. Hi there, it's Connor. Welcome to my channel where I share my experiences in the aquarium hobby with a focus on education and technology. Today, I want to go through a care guide and my experience keeping yo-yo loaches in my first year having them. Now, when I first got yo-yo loaches, I had been thinking about them for a while. There was actually a debate between them and clown loaches. I eventually made the commitment to clown loaches and decided to upgrade my tank size to fit them. Another reason for that is I never really saw yo-yo loaches at the store, so I never really had the opportunity to pick them up when I would have got them. Fast forward a bit, I ended up with a snail problem in my goldfish tank. And I knew some loaches were compatible with goldfish, such as the dojo loach. Now, I didn't really like the look of them, and I had read experiences of people having success with yo-yo loaches, and even them recommended on some guides. And oranges did cross water parameters with them, although they were on the edge range for each, but I decided to take the leap and mix them together. Now, this combination turned out to not work together at all. It's actually one of the biggest mistakes I've made in the aquarium hobby so far, but I'll talk more on that later. But anyway, let's get into the care for yo-yo loaches. First, I want to talk about growth and the size of them. Now, the max they will get to is six inches, although most people seem to say they get to about five inches max, seems to be the average. They do grow very slow from my experience. They seem to even grow slower than clown loaches from what I've seen. And I'd say of all the fish I've ever kept, they are the slowest so far that I've seen. I got mine anywhere between one and a half to three quarters of an inch. And about one year later, I'd say they're only one to one and a half inches long now. But they really haven't gained that much in size at all. Now for tank size and setup, you will read different recommendations for the minimum tank size online. The one thing to keep in mind though, is you need a group of them at the minimum three but really five or more is better. That'll make them much happier, but at the minimum, you absolutely need three. So you need to keep in mind that that's at least three fish that are gonna get to five inches. Um, ideally, you're gonna have five that are gonna get five inches. So really the absolute minimum was gonna be a 29 gallon tank. Although something like a 40 long or 55 is even much better. I think to keep them happy, a, group of, a full group of five to six um, for the life, 55 will be best but you could do 40 long and then, you know, if you just do just three, I think a 29 will be okay. Um, but it should be fine totally when they're younger, but when they're an adult size, you know, bigger is gonna be better. To keep in mind with tank setup is they are gonna need a lid or netting because they will jump. They actually are the only fish I personally ever had jump out of a tank. Now, this was when doing maintenance and the lid was open and one had just jumped out and you know, I came back a minute later and I saw something weird on the ground and it was one of them. Uh, they were only out of the tank for 30 seconds a minute, um, so put them back and they were totally fine, so that was good. But keep that in mind that they will jump out if they have the chance. Switching over to water parameters, you'll find most commonly they prefer a pH of 6 to 7.5, a temperature of between 72 degrees and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and a hardness anywhere between 2 to 12 degrees. Now the parameters I've kept them at is the pH has always been right at 7.4, the temperature originally was anywhere between 72 to 74 um, because it was keeping them like goldfish. Now um, I acclimated them and now they're staying around 80 degrees in the community tank. And the hardness has always been at the upper of the range, right around 12 degrees. Um, but they've been good either with the bottom or the top of range of the temperature. Obviously you just need to acclimate them between. Next I want to talk about tank mates for them and aggression. So for aggression, they're not aggressive. They're a very peaceful fish. They are great for a community tank. Um, the only one thing to be maybe careful about them is they have had some reports of aggression with certain loach species. I was actually a little cautious about putting up my clown loaches, but they're totally fine, totally peaceful with my clown loaches. Um, I have read some bad reports, but that seems to be from people that have either a small number of clown loaches or a small number of yo-yo loaches. Without the group, they tend to be more aggressive but they will fight with each other sometimes. They will spar, um, probably for dominance. I know my clown loaches do the same thing, but you'll see them just spar off. The, you'll see they're not actually really trying to hurt each other. They're just kind of just trying to spar and 
Um, they kind of square up and then go right at each other. Plants are completely okay with them. I have never had any problems, although in the tank I do keep them with, it's just tougher plants, Java Fern, Anubias, um, Amazon Swords, and so stuff like that. Mainly because I have other species that, uh, you know, will dig into plants. But um, at least when they're young, they really don't think they have the ability to dig up plants. So when they're older, um, you might want to be have caution with any rooted plants, but any tough plants, they'll be fine. And I've never seen them try to eat plants or anything. Now, as far as what species they're compatible with, as I said, any community species, any uh, cichlids that aren't too large or too aggressive should be good. Um, other bottom dwellers are good as long as there is enough space for them. Um, careful with other low species, but um, I would just, if you're going to mix them with other low species, do some further research into that. I have personally kept them successfully with angelfish, clown loaches, blood parrots, polar parrots, mollies, and corydoras without any problems at all. Now, the one fish that I have been unsuccessful with is Aranda goldfish. Now, they can match the parameters of the goldfish. Their bottom range, you know, 72, 74, will uh, match the upper range of uh, goldfish and Aranda goldfish. Um, although the problem I had was I have a larger Aranda goldfish. So, you know, sometimes she just likes to, you know, relax and chill, isn't the most active all the time. Uh, they start to nip on her when. And, you know, I saw that initially they go for it a little bit and then, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then um, I started to see part of it started to white. And so I removed them out, but then my goldfish ended up getting sick, got a bacterial infection probably from having open wound on it. So would not mix them with fancy goldfish at all, although the parameters will match. I would recommend against that. Uh, now, if you have like a common goldfish, uh, shibunkin, I'm pronouncing that right, uh, common, any of the fast, more pond, type goldfish, um, that would probably be okay, but uh, I still don't know if I'd recommend it. I would say stick with more tropical fish, and I mean, there's so many combinations you can put them with. Now for food I use, I use a few foods. The main one I use is Hikari bottom feeder wafers, um, and actually ran, just ran out of it, so I don't have it at the show. I'll show it on the screen here. The next one that I do is shrimp wafers right here by Tetra. They seem to love these, and then Another food that isn't specifically for them, but it does sink a bit and I see them go for it and eat it, um, is Kari Viber Bites, and it's known for helping with color and the patterns are very vivid on the ones I have. So it's a good option just to feed your tank and some will get down to the bottom and they'll eat those. But really just have, you know, I think a couple um, bottom feeder foods um, just to give them variety here and there. And then I also like to give them treats, um, you know, maybe once a week. Um, cooked peas that are peeled, put them in, um, and they love to go for those. And then also frozen bloodworms. Um, I like to put those in and they'll say they like to go for those, you know, once or twice a week, get them some treats. Now for all the topics I want to go through for caring for yo-yo loaches, I want to talk about if you are thinking about them, if I recommend them. So I'd say yes, they are a very active fish, which is very great. Um, they're not going to get quite as large as clown loaches, but they do possess a lot of the uh, qualities that they have. They're very active, they're very social, um, they'll have some of the fun behaviors, they'll interact with each other, you know, they did the, they'll spar between each other, like I said. Um, you know, one thing clown loaches do is they'll kind of pick on other fish a little bit, like, you know, gently nail the bottom, um, they'll do that too. But yeah, if you want a bottom dweller that's very active and gets to a moderate size, then I think they're a great pick. They're going to be great for any community tank. Um, and it's really like, yeah, if you want a larger fish than a Corydora, um, but isn't too large, they're a great pick. They have an absolutely cool pattern on them. And uh, compared to clown loaches, they actually are more active than them, I find. Like clown loaches, usually at night, they'll just go hide in the cave, where I assume yo yo loaches most of the day. Um, the only thing to keep in mind, though, is um, because you do need a group and they do get to five inches, um, really, I think it's best if you have a 55 gallon tank or larger. Um, like I said, you can do smaller, um, and that'll be okay, but maybe they're not the best species, but, um, you know, really, if you have a 55-gallon tank or you're going to plan to get a 55-gallon tank, then I think they're a good option for you. But if smaller, uh, you know, I'd really think about what you want to stock in there, and maybe they're not the best choice, or maybe there's um, some other smaller loaches that you could get in replace of them. So anyway, that wraps up my experience and care guide for yo-yo loaches. If you found this video useful, Please give it a like so others can find it as well. Anyways, I'll catch everyone in the next video.